Hello everyone, I'm Marlik Kutsuya and this is my teacher Ms. Rachel Vesaidenet and today we're going to have an English lesson along with um, two other students from our school, Weerskool Rustemirg, Laila Brits and Reme Fulwe Dube. Hello guys, today we are going to do a language lesson. We are going to focus on all the language structures for paper one and then we are going to um, focus on active and passive as per the ATP. According to the ATP, the annual teaching plan, this week we are supposed to focus on active and passive, therefore we will obey and do so. Okay, let me share um, my screen with you. Just give me one second. Okay. Can you all see? Good. Okay, let me start a slideshow. First of all, the language structures for paper one. There are many. Um, some of the language structures you can always expect in a paper one. Um, and by learning those, you can actually ensure that you get good marks. The paper one is obviously the language paper. It consists of a 30 mark comprehension, 10 mark summary, 20 marks visual literacy and 20 marks language. We are going to focus on the language part, specifically active and passive for today. Now, first of all, the first structure that you always get is the editing. That is the one you struggle with. It is where you have to identify mistakes and fix them. Now, the mistakes that you can expect there include spelling errors, tense errors, concord errors, correct use of the apostrophe and words often confused. Now, of those words, I think you might have forgotten what concord means. Um, can anyone tell me what concord means? Concord is subject verb agreement. It is where um, the singular gets an S and the plural doesn't. OK, so th they often ask um, that with the editing. Then the reported speech usually counts three marks. Um, one mark you usually get for the correct punctuation and then for changing the words into indirect speech. Then you can also expect questions, negatives, tags, tenses. In other words, they will tell you um, change the following sentence into the past tense or into the present tense or into the future tense or whatever. And then you just have to keep the um, overall tense like the simple, continuous or perfect the same. Homophones and homonyms, synonyms and antonyms, singular and plural. Degrees of comparison, punctuation and conditionals. Conditionals are if sentences. Now, they haven't asked that in a long time, but um, it is one of the um, language structures that they might ask. Then there's part of, parts of speech, be able to identify and change words into different parts of speech. They may ask you, for example, um, identify a verb from this sentence or identify the underlined words, what part of speech they are, then you have to say adjective or adverb or whatever. Or they could ask you to change words, change from an adjective to an adverb. Now, what do you usually add, Marli, to change from an adjective to an adverb? Um, ED. Yes, Lee. We, she is beautiful, but she sings beautifully. Hey, so that is how we usually change from an adjective to an adverb. And then lastly, the active and passive voice. That usually counts two in an exam, and that is what I want to focus on today. I want to teach you how to change a sentence from the active voice into the passive voice and from the passive voice into the active voice. Now here I gave you the kill and ant sentences. It is one sentence in each of the nine tenses that you have to know, as well as uh, the active and the passive, as well as the recipe for how a passive is formed. Now, if you have a look at me, I um, at this with me, um, you will see how um, they are divided. In the present tense, 
I kill an ant, the present simple tense. In the passive voice, the sentence changes to an ant is killed by me. So the recipe there is an R plus third column. Now the third column verbs are the ones that you form with I have just. The first column verbs are the verbs that um, are in their regular form. Kill, eat, sleep, carry. The um, second column verbs are the past tense verbs. Killed, ate, slept, carried. And the third column verbs you form with I have just. I have just killed. I have just eaten. I have just carried. Okay, um, I'm going to come back to this slide because I, it's very important. And at the end of the slideshow, you will um, know exactly what this slide is for. Okay. Now the active and passive voice. Why do we use it? Why is it an important element of language to know? The term voice refers to the activeness or passiveness of a verb, depending on whether the subject is doing the action of the verb or the, um, receiving the action of the verb. Okay. Now usually we have sentences like, um, the cat chases its tail. So in other words, the subject does something to the object. In that sentence, the cat chases its tail. The tail is being chased. Okay. Are you with me so far, people? Good. So in other words, you can say the subject verbs the object. Okay. Now in the passive voice, it's the other way around. You mustn't change the meaning of the sentence. You mustn't say the tail chases the cat. Because then it's first of all still in the active voice and second of all, you have completely changed the meaning of the sentence. OK, so in the passive voice, it must be its tail is chased by the cat. If you have a look at the sentences I used there, the dog ate his tin food food the subject verbs the object in the passive voice his tin food was eaten by the dog the object is verbed by the subject now people you'll understand what i mean with this just now um the blue writing is just why we use the active and passive the active is a clear way of writing it's strong verbs it makes a strong impact the passive gives formality it focuses on the procedure of results and it can disguise responsibility hey lockdown was enforced not they enforced lockdown okay now four steps to change sentences from the active to the passive voice first of all you underline the verb Layla, do you know what a verb is um, yes, ma'am. It is um, a doing where it's something you do. Yes, exactly. And is it easy to identify the verb in a sentence? Yes. So that's your first step. You identify the verb, you underline it, and then identify the tense. This is very important because you need to know which tense the verb is in in order to know how the um, what the passive will look like. Then you divide your sentence into a subject, a verb, and an object. Okay, everything else in the sentence is just white noise. You underline the subject, the verb, and the object. All the other adjectives and stuff you leave out. You just underline those three things because that's the most important parts. Begin the new sentence with the object. The dog eats his tinned food. What's the subject there? The dog. Hey, the Hi. verb? What is the verb, Dube? So in the sentence that you just gave us right now, ma'am. Yes, in the dog eats his tin food, the verb is? The verb is eat. Exactly. And the object is his food, okay, or his tinned food, whatever. 
So the verb in the passive voice consists of the past participle form, the third column, with some um, form of the verb to be or occasionally the verb got. For example, I was stung by a bee. When you are asked to change a sentence from one voice to another, make sure that you keep the tense of the original sentence. In other words, the sentence, the dog eats his tinned food, would be his tinned food is eaten by the dog. Okay, the past, uh, the partici past participle form is the third column verb. Now, I want you to turn on your microphone so that we can do these sentences together because the best way to learn is to actually do, to have a look at the examples. I don't think you can understand the theory until you have applied it in practice. So I'm going to ask each of you to do a sentence um, and then we'll repeat the process. Okay. Number one, she eats an apple. Dube, can you change that into the passive voice for us? Yes, ma'am. An apple is eaten by her. Right. An apple is eaten by her. Okay. Um, you can switch off your microphone, Dube, because it um, it's echoing a little bit. An apple is eaten by her. He saw that the word eats is in the present tense, the simple present tense. Hey, so that's why it becomes is eaten. Number two, Marley, they ran a mile. A mile is ran by them, run by them. Okay, a mile is run by them. What? Tense is the verb in? Past. The past tense, the past simple tense. So that's why it's a mile is run. Hey, uh, oh, sorry, a mile was run by them. You have to um, change the, um, or you have to keep the tense the same. The past tense is run, so it would be was run. Okay, you can switch off your microphone. Let's ask Layla the next one. Number three, we will swim in the sea. Um, uh, ma'am, I think it's in the sea. Um, we will be swim. Uh, we will swim. I don't know, ma'am. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. The verb is in the future tense. Do you agree with me? The present, the simple future tense. So it must be the sea, okay, the object is the sea. The sea will be swum in by us, okay. Let's have a look, let's go back to the recipe. Um, if you have a look there, we have done sentences for each of these in the present simple tense. The recipe is is or are plus third column. Okay. An ant is killed by me. So you have to identify the verb first of all. The verb is kill. Then the object is an ant. So you have to start with that now. An ant, is it one or two? It's one. So it must be is killed by me. Is plus third column. Okay. In the present past tense, an ant, oh, sorry, an ant was killed by me. Okay, because in the past tense, it's was or were plus third column, the recipe. In the future tense, I will kill an ant. An ant will be killed by me. Okay, now let's have a look at the next sentences because... Um, we are going to do them now as well in the next slide. I am killing an ant. These three sentences are in the continuous tense. Present, past and future continuous tense. I am killing an ant becomes an ant is being killed by me. You have to go somewhere with that ing. Okay, so in the passive voice, you add being. An ant is, because it's still just one, being 
peeled by me. Do you see how you use the little recipe um, to form a person? I was killing an ant. An ant was because it's past. Here it shows you it's past. Was being because you have to go somewhere with the ing. Killed by me. The recipe here was or were plus being plus third column. Now this one, I will kill an ant. Can you say an ant? Um, this is wrong now. It must be, um, I will be killing an ant. Sorry guys, it's wrong on the um, slide. I will be killing an ant. An ant will be being killed by me is not correct. So there's no passive in other words. I have killed an ant, an ant has been killed by me, have or has plus been plus third column. We are now in the perfect tense. Okay, so in the perfect tense we have have, has and had. Um, I had killed an ant, an ant had been killed by me, had plus been plus third column. I will have killed an ant, an ant will have been killed by me. Will plus have plus been plus third column. Now, if you keep these recipes in mind, let's have a look at those sentences again. OK, let's start at number four. I have changed the light bulb. What tense is this verb in? Do where do you know? Um, the verb isn't the um, past tense. Nope, it's nope. in the uh, perfect. perfect. Huh? It's in the yeah. perfect present. It's in the perfect present tense. Good. The word have tells you that it's in the present tense because it's not had, but it also tells you that it is in the perfect tense. Okay. So the recipe for a passive in the present per, um, perfect tense is the light bulb. has been changed by me. OK, let's do the next one, Dube, because I did this one now. We wear dresses. Dresses? Uh, Ma'am, okay. dresses, dresses are worn by us, I think. Perfect. Why is it are worn and not were worn? Um, isn't it because the verb isn't the um, the tense of the verb? Isn't the yeah. where is in the present simple tense? OK, you must know your tenses in order to do passives. There are three tenses. The um, simple tense, which just has the regular forms of the verbs, the continuous tense, namely the ing tense and the perfect tense, namely the have, has and had tense. OK, so number six, Marley, I was flying to Cape Town. What tense is this in? Past tense. Past tense, yes. Past continuous because there's an ing. Okay. Yes. Can you change it into a passive for us? Um, to Cape Town, I was being flown. Okay, we start with Cape Town. Okay, Cape Town was being flown to by me. It's a little bit of a clumsy sentence, but sometimes in exams they give you clumsy sentences. And I actually got all these sentences from exams. Okay, so that is why I want to practice even the ones that don't sound so completely right um, in passives. So Cape Town was being flown to by me. You have to go somewhere with the ing. OK. Number seven, the dog ate the shoe. Laila, what tense is it in? Ma'am, it's the past tense. Yes, the past simple, hey, because there's no ing, have or had. So what would you start with? The What's shoe the yes. was eaten by the dog. Perfect, because the shoe is the object 
and the verb is in the past um, simple tense. Hey, so the um, shoe was eaten by the dog. The cat loved his catnip. Um, Dube. The keys what? or um, the, 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 um, the verb is in the past tense. Yes. So by beginning the sentence, the catnip is being, no, I'm mm -hmm. struggling with this one, ma'am. Okay. It's in the past tense, like you said. There's no ing, there's no had. Okay, there's no have or has. So his catnip was loved by the dog, uh, by the cat. Easy enough, hey, because um, the um, there's no ing and no have or had. So it's in the simple tense. So it's just was or were plus third column. Number nine, I resist temptation every day. Marley? Um, what tense every is it? It's in the present tense. Yes. So can I say temptation is resisted by me every day? Perfect. 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 You identify the you identify the object without um, getting confused by the white noise of every day. Temptation is resisted by me every day. Okay. Um, because it's in the present simple tense. So therefore it's is resisted. Number 10, the pirate capsized the boat. Laila, what tense is it in? Ma'am, it is in the simple past tense. Exactly. And I think it is the boat. Mm -hmm. Can you say it had been capsized by the pirate because it's um already it already capsized the past. The yes, so you keep it in the past tense. You don't change it to the past perfect. It's not like reported speech. You must say then the boat was capsized. capsized. Yes, we don't have to jump it one tense back like in reported speech. You just change it to start with the object. Okay. I think that's where most learners get confused. You want to jump it one tense back. When there's no ing and no have and have, has and had, it's in the simple tense. So then you don't add being or been. Okay. Being and been are only added in the um, continuous tense, namely in the ing tense and in the perfect tense. 11. Dube. In China, people eat rice. What tense is it? It's in the simple present tense. Exactly. So what do you start with? I'm going to start with rice is being yes. eaten by people it, in China. Did you add a being there? Yes, ma'am. No, so, you yeah. mustn't because there's no ing. You can't say in um, China people are eating it's not in China people are eating rice. It's just in China people eat rice. So no okay. ing if there's no ing in the sentence. Okay. 12. Marley, I looked at her photo in the magazine. What tense is it in? It's in the past tense, ma'am. Exactly. So you would say her photo in the magazine. Should you say yeah. had been looked at by me? Nope. Just was just looked at. When there's no uh, have or has or had in the sentence, don't add the um, have or had or has in the passive. Okay. I just want to go back to this quickly because you are all struggling with it a little bit. This sentence, the second one in the past tense, I killed an ant. Okay. It's the simple past tense. There's no ing. There's no have, has, or had. Okay. So the recipe here, was or were plus third column. Don't add an ing unless there's an ing in this sentence. Okay. Don't add have, had, um, 
O has plus been if it's not in the active sentence already. OK, that's what we mean by changing the tense. OK, um, so number 12 was her photo in the magazine was looked at by me. Number 13, I responded to his email, Laila. Ma'am, it's in the simple past tense. And yes. it is um, his email was responded to by me. Perfect. I think you've got it. Hey, his email was responded to by me. Was or were plus third column because it's in the simple past. Usually the passives are in the simple past. Most of them, as you can see that I got from papers, were um, are in the simple past. The class asked the teacher a question. Dube? Ma'am, before I answer the question, can um, ma'am quickly remind me when is the word being used again? When do we use being? Being is used when the verb already has an ing in it. Like number 15, I will be marrying my fiance. Um, or if th this is the class, um, we're asking the teacher a question, then you oh. use be. Okay. okay. So, I just want to so make sure. First of all, what tense the sentence is in? It's in the past tense. It's in the simple past. Hey, because there's no had and no be. So, what would you start with? I would start with uh, a question. Yes. Is asked by the clause. Perfect. A question. Um, no, sorry, Dubi. A question was asked because we are in the past. Yes, because the question the was asked by the class. Why did you leave out the teacher? Because you can. You don't get any marks for it. It's just white noise. Hey, I just want to know that you can change the verb into the past tense. Um, that is all you need to know with active and passive. 15, I will be marrying my fiance tomorrow. This one is a trick question. There's no passive, hey, because you can't say, my fiance will be being married tomorrow by me. Okay, it doesn't make sense. So this one is a trick question. Number 16, the kids have eaten the sweets, Marley. Um, I would say it would be the sweets have been eaten by the kids. Perfect. Because it's in the um, present perfect tense. Hey, because there's a have. A have or a has means it's in the present perfect tense. So you have to add a been. The sweets have been eaten by the kids. 17, Layla, the flowers grow in the ground. What tense is it in? It's in the simple present tense. In the simple present tense, exactly. So? In the ground, the flowers are grown. Um, okay, that's not, that's not um, completely correct, but your verb is at least correct. You, can, you start with the ground. The ground is grown in by the flowers. Okay, but you would still get your mark because your verb is still correct. Um, no, and it should. Sorry, I'm confused as well. The flowers, plural. So, um, okay, no, I'm confusing myself now, even. So, just ignore what I just said. The Concord is fine. Everybody hates broccoli. Um, Dube? Okay. Um, what tense is it in? It's in the simple present tense, ma'am. The simple present tense. So what do you start with? Broccoli. Yes. Is. Um, I'll, the, I want to continue, but the problem is then the then I change my verb into the past tense. You don't change it into the past tense. You change it into the third column. Broccoli okay. is hated, yes. 
Yes, broccoli is hated by everyone. Yes, you're not changing it into the fast, into, you're changing it into the fast participle. You have to do that. Okay, good. Yeah. Number 19, Laila, I play several musical instruments. Ma'am, it is in the um, simple present tense. Yes. And it is several music instruments are played by me. Yes. Why is it are played and not is played? Because um, musical instruments um, is in the plural form. Exactly. So we have to have a look at the Concord as well. Hey, 20, I was reading the book, Marley. Um, I would say that would be the book was being read by me. Perfect. We are in the past continuous. Hey? So the book was being read by me. Okay, people, I think you understand it now. Hey, I think it's going much better than in the beginning. Then, we have to also be able to change a sentence um, from the passive to the active voice. So, you underline the whole verb, meaning the is, the being, the been, everything. Okay, and identify the tense. Divide the sentence into a subject, verb, and object. Begin with the subject, not with the object. Okay, and once again, um, you change the past participle form and change it back to the first column verb. Keep the tense. Okay, I think you know better what I mean by this now. So, number one, I'm going to do it with you. The bone is eaten by the dog. The verb is not just eaten. The whole verb is is eaten. Okay, you have to add the auxiliaries, the hulpwerkwoorde, so that um, the person will, so that you will know um, which tense it's in. So, is eaten is in the present simple tense. The dog eats the bone. Okay, easy enough. Number two, Marley, will you do number two for us? The newspaper was read by her. What tense is it in? It's in the present tense, so it's just, I know, it's past. Yes. So it's, she read the newspaper. Perfect. She read the newspaper. Okay, perfect. Number three, Layla, her car will be washed by her. Uh, Ma'am, it's simple future tense. And yes. it will be, um, she will wash her car. She will wash her car. Perfect. How did you know that by her must change into she? You know that um, in a passive voice, she changes to her. Hey. Number four, Dube, the food is being cooked by the chef. What tense are we in? Earth to Dube. I think he has disappeared. Oh, shucks, he's disappeared. Okay, Marley, can you do that one for us? The food is being cooked by the chef. What tense um, are Continuous. Yes. yes. The present is um, high because it yes. is. Okay. What do you start uh, with? The chef mm -hmm. is cooking the food. Perfect. The chef is cooking the food because we have to do something with the ing, so it should be is cooking. Hey, Laila, the guests were being greeted by the host. What tense are we in? Ma'am, it is past continuous tense. And exactly. I would say um, the house mm -hmm. um, is greeting, uh, was greeting the guests. Perfect. Was and not is because we in, are in the past tense. Hey. Number six, Marley, a laptop has just been purchased. Um, she has just purchased the laptop. Yes. Okay. We are in the um, in the present perfect tense. So she has just purchased a laptop. Layla, seven, a lion had been seen by them. What tense are we? The 
perfect bar stands. Yes. And I would say they had seen the lion. Yes, perfect. They had seen a lion. And number eight, Marley, her cell phone will have been used by her by tomorrow. By tomorrow, she would have used her cell phone. Will have used. Okay. It's, guys, you, you've got it. Okay. You understand actives and passive style, in my opinion, because you are able to identify the tenses. Now, my tip and trick for you for an exam is write down all these and sentences at the beginning of the paper. You have more than enough time. You have reading time. Um, you usually sit there for half an hour after your paper is complete. Hey. So write down your recipes for reported speech for whatever. Write the and sentences, all of them. Change them into um, passives and write down the little recipes at the beginning of your paper on your question paper and then you can go back and check what tense is this sentence in and then change it into the appropriate um, active or passive voice. Okay, do you feel that you understand this work now or does anyone still have a question? Good. Thank you guys. Have a nice day.